This video will look at file handling. So we've seen how programs use variables and data structures to store data whilst the program is running. But because variables and data structures are really just memory locations on RAM, it means that when you close your program, all that data is going to be lost. So we need to make sure that there is a way that we can save our essays that we've been working on or the high score that we've achieved in the game um, to an external file so that when the program does close, the data is still there and can be reloaded the next time. And the nice thing is that a program, most programming languages or, um, will offer a way to actually store the data in files that are external to the program's data. Now, in order to read from or write to an external file, programs first have to open them. So most languages will have um, a function that allows the program to open a file or create one if it doesn't yet exist. Um, and for this example, we will call that function open. So when we use that function, we'll have to give the uh, name of the file that we want to open and also state the mode of opening. So either we're opening it in read mode or in write mode. We also need to assign the file to a special variable within our program so we can start, start working with it. And that special variable is called a file handler. So here's an example. We've got here the file handler called new file. Um, and that is being assigned the file that exists um, external to the program. So here we are opening up the new file.txt, so it's a text file, and we're opening it up in write mode so that we can then write to the file. So here we've got an example that shows the use of the open function within the name of the file uh, within, and its file type and the mode of opening. And as I said, new file is the variable, it's the file handler. So if we want to write to the file, once we've opened it up in write mode, we can start using the write statement in order to actually um, start putting data onto our text file. So here is an example of writing the text hello world to our text file. We've got our file handler, dot write, and then in brackets, the text that we want to add. So if we wish to write more than one line to the file, we need to state when uh, we wish to start a new line and we can do that with uh, backslash n. So backslash n um, puts a new line on our text file. Uh, we don't need to put this in for the last line because there is no other line coming after that. So here you can see we've got three lines being written to the text file. Hello world, hello world again, and then no more hello world. And each of these will be on a new line because there is that backslash n um, after each of the um, strings that we are adding to the file. Once we have written our files, we have to remember to close it, otherwise we might get some errors. So to close the file, at the end of our script that we've been writing, we just write the close function and we apply that to our file handler. So new file.close will close the file. And the result of the program, if we were to run that code, it would result in a text file being created with three lines of text um, within it. Now that's an example of writing to a file. Now let's have a look at examples of reading a file. So first of all, we need to open the file, but this time we're gonna open it in read mode. So we got an example of using the open function with the name of the file and its data type file type sorry and we are also opening it up in read mode and here we are assigning that to a variable a file handler called new file so once it's opened up we can then start to execute some um, statements that will be able to read the data from that file so we can use the dot read line statement with our file handler if we want to read a particular line so here if we were to run that code, what we would end up with is the first line being read from the file and put into a variable called line from file. Now it's important to recognize that when we read a file, we use an imaginary cursor to keep track of our location within the file. So if you think about the flashing cursor that you have on a word processor, think of a similar thing when you're trying to read a file. So there's an imaginary cursor which will keep track of the location. So that after we've read the first line, the cursor's flashing at the start of the second line, so it's ready to read that line afterwards. 
So if there's a file with three lines of text, after we read the first line, the cursor will move to the end of that first line. This is useful as it means that we can use the same read line function again to continue on from the previous line of text. So if we were to use the read line function three times on the um, file that we created um, a few slides back, then we would be able to um, read each of those lines in uh, to our program and output them to the screen like so. So the fact that cursor is used when reading files means that we can also use a loop to read an entire file. So most languages have an end of file statement and that means when the cursor reaches the end of the file. Uh, so we can use that within a while loop to read the contents of a file which is much more um, with much more efficiency than repeated read line statements because we might not know how many lines a file has. So if you can use a while loop which will repeat until the end, it doesn't matter how many lines there are, it will work for however big the file is. So if we were to use this um, example code, new file equals open the new file.txt in read mode. So that's opening up the file in read mode, putting that into the file handler called new file. And then whilst we're not at the end of that file, we can print out each line one after the other, resulting in that output. And some languages actually provide a function to read an entire file um, in one go without the need for a loop. So Python in particular provides the read function which will read an entire file with just one line of code. So if we were to open up the file and then print newfile.read, that would output the entire file like so.